Hi, this is Luke at Vision Forward and welcome back to another Tech Talk. Now, do you like to read? Well, in that case, stay tuned for the Orcam Read. All right, so if you don't know what the Orcam Read is, well, you must have been living under a rock because they've done a lot of advertising with their devices. Uh, but this is a company who make OCR devices. Those are devices that can read aloud to you. And they have a couple of great ones. This is one of them. The other one is the Orcam My Eye. And the basic idea is if you have trouble reading, you can take this device and have it read printed text aloud to you. And it does a fantastic job at doing that. So if you have trouble reading, then this could be the device for you. Well, as you can tell, this device is pretty small and compact. So that's one of the great things about OrCam devices in general is just uh, the fact that they're super portable and have very accurate OCR as well. And this one is more like a pen kind of shape as compared to the OrCam Read. It's a little larger, a little uh, kind of nicer to hold in the hand because that's what you're going to be doing with this one rather than having it on the glasses there. And in terms of weight, we're looking at less than two ounces. So it's a really pretty lightweight. And the battery life, you're looking at about three to four hours of continuous use. Now that's a lot better than the Orcam My Eye that goes on the glasses because that one you're looking at about 90 minutes of battery life. Um, so that's definitely one of the big pluses for this particular device. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the button layout here and we're gonna be starting from the back. Now the back is rounded, so that helps you identify where the back of the device is. And uh, the buttons are all on the top surface. So starting from the back, we have the USB-C slot. This is going to be your charging slot. So get it plugged up and then you will have the power whenever you need it. From there, we are on the power button itself. It's kind of a rectangular button and uh, yep, that will obviously turn on the device in case you didn't guess. Now there's four LEDs on here and those are going to indicate the battery level. So each of those is 25% and so you'll be able to see how much battery you've got left there. Moving toward the front, we have a plus and a minus button and these are going to be for changing the volume. Now they do have some other functions as well and we'll cover those as we move forward with the video. And then right toward the front here, we have the button which will take a picture and then it's going to start to read to you. Now the camera itself is located on the flat surface right at the front of the device. So you don't want to get your fingers on there. You don't want to get it smudged up. And uh, while you're reading, you're going to point that flat surface toward the document and then take a picture and it's going to read to you. Okay, so let's do what the OrCam Read is designed to do and read some text. Uh, I have a newspaper here, so we're going to try reading this. All we need to do is hold the OrCam read with the camera pointed toward the newspaper. And I'm going to hold down the circular button on the top. Now, when I do that, a square laser grid will come out of the end of the OrCam read and it's going to shine on the paper. I just need to position the text that I want to read inside that grid, let go of the button, and then it's going to read the text aloud to me. And being an OrCam device, it's going to start reading it almost instantaneously. All right, let's give this a go. So I'm going to hold down that circular the button. The grid is here. I'm going to position my text inside the grid and then I'm going to let go of the button. And then all of a sudden you change the world. Elizabeth Holmes joined the company a second. I'll hit that same button to stop it reading and hopefully you could hear there it was very accurate and it did a great job. So we've seen how to read with the laser grid, but there is another way we can read, and this is using a pointer rather than a laser grid. And the idea behind this is it's a bit more specific in terms of you telling the device where you want it to read from. So it's exactly the same process, um, but instead of the grid, a pointer comes out of the end, and we put that pointer on the page where we want to read from, and it will start reading from that specific area. Uh, so let's give this a try. Now to switch between these two uh, modes, you can just press the plus and minus buttons together, and uh, that's it's going to switch between them. So uh, I've already done that. Let's go ahead and hold down the circular button to get our laser pointer out. And we're going to point it to a specific paragraph here and I will let go. Yes, Holmes required the new advisors to sign strict non-disclosure agreements. However, and forbade them from speaking to the media, according to people familiar with the matter. Though the new book and I'll stop it there. Again, it did a fantastic job. And that time it started to read from specifically where I put the pointer. 
So one of the other features of this device is the ability to pause and to forward wind and rewind and also to change the volume. And all of those things are done with the buttons on the top surface here. So first of all, volume, nice and easy. We have the plus and minus buttons. And while the device is not reading to us, those will change uh, the volume. So plus button will be up, minus down. Let's give it a try on the minus here. Down. There's a volume down. volume down and let's go back up again up. and there's our volume up. Volume so very straightforward. Now while the device is reading to us they actually change their function and so the plus button would be a skip forward and the minus button would be a skip backward and that circular button which we use to take a picture and have the device read to us if we double press that quickly while it's reading that becomes a pause button so they do have a couple of different functions depending on if the device is reading or not let's give this a try here i'm going to hold down the circular button to get the pointer out we'll read a paragraph and i'm going to try pausing it forward winding and rewinding here all right, we're taking the picture, now it's going to start to read. Okay, quick double press on the picture button to pause. And we're going to hear a beeping sound. There it is, that allows us to know that the device is paused. Quick double press will resume. There we go. Let's do the plus to skip forward. Minus to skip back. And I'll hit the uh, circular button once to stop the reading altogether. All right, nice and easy, and those tactile buttons really do make it uh, straightforward to control the device. So if you have had trouble with the Orcam My Eye, then maybe you'll find this one just that little bit easier. Okay, it's time to challenge the Orcam Read and see how well it can read in low light conditions. Let's imagine you're in a restaurant and you're trying to read a menu. You need it to do the job for you. Now, luckily, there is an LED built into the front of the Orcam Read. Theoretically, in a low light condition, it should detect there is a lack of light, turn on the LED and illuminate the document and then be able to read it. But let's find out whether it actually works or not. Uh, we're gonna try and read this flyer. I'm gonna hold down the button. And let's see, the LED came on, I saw. I'm going to let go of the button. All right, took a picture. Will it read? Overview. Or can my eye and my reader 2.0 are the latest devices from Orcan? All right, listen to that. It did a fantastic job. Awesome. So we're going to take a look at one final function here, and we have saved the best for last. This is going to be the smart reading function, unique to the Orcam devices and very cool. The idea is it gives us a way to scan a page of text non-visually by asking the device to find bits of information for us. And there's a number of things that you can ask it to find. In this case, we're going to do a phone number. So uh, we're going to ask the device to do smart reading. It will take a picture of the page of text, and then we're going to ask it to find the phone number. Now we can activate this with a voice command. So uh, this is just kind of like using your Siri or your Google Assistant or your Alexa or whatever. We can use a phrase, and I'm not gonna say it just now, I'll say it when I'm ready, but we can use a phrase to have the device take a picture of the page, and then we can control it just using our voice. So we're gonna do that now. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna hold the device back. I have a flyer in front of me, and we'll give this a try. Hey, Orcam. Smart reading. Ready. Find phone numbers. Found one phone number. Milwaukee Y5 3213414611111.www.visionforward.org slash store. Exit. Exiting. All right, and there you go. So it managed to take a picture of the page and found the phone number just from us asking. And now, if you want to call the store here, you've got the right phone number. All right, so we're going to go down to the kitchen now. We'll see how well it works for reading labels. Uh, we'll start out in the fridge. Last time I was in there, I found $20. So let's see if there's any money in there this time, and then we'll try and identify some products. So we'll uh, take a look here and uh, oh, sadly no money this time, but let's see how well we can identify some products here. We're gonna start off with some tomato ketchup. We'll go ahead and use our device, see if we can read it. Hunt's tomato ketchup made from vine ripe and California tomatoes. All right, did a great job. Read the whole label, no problems there. Let's try something else here. This is gonna be a challenge. We have Mountain Dew, so this is curved, and also the font is a little bit uh, odd, so we'll see whether we can read this or not. I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of it. 
No, so nothing there, unfortunately. This one is, is very challenging. Now, we do have some nutrition facts on the back. It may be that those can be read to us, so we'll give those a try. Sodium GNG skipped three lines of unreadable text. Protein dye skipped 11 lines of... And I'll stop it there. So it read a couple of things to us, but uh, all in all, didn't do a fantastic job. Now it may be if we held it closer, it might have done a better job, but I will say the contrast on this can is definitely a tricky one for an OCR device to read. One more thing from the fridge here. Let's uh, check out these croutons. Now uh, with these, the word Caesar, which is the brand name, is in this cursive font. So it's likely we will not be able to read that, but let's see if we can read any of the other things on the, uh, on the packet here. Text seems upside down. To read it, rotate the page and try again. That time it told me the text was upside down, which it isn't. We're going to try it one more time here. No. Okay, sadly we did not get a very clear reading of that. So, sometimes you win or sometimes you lose. Now, let's try some things from the cupboard here. Uh, we'll try a couple of spices and things like that and we'll see how it does with those. Uh, so we're gonna start off here. We have some parsley flakes. So let's see how well we can read these Can't read text can't read the text an interesting one because it's a pretty good print on here You would think it would be able to read it. We're gonna try it one more time here Flakes and that time we got flakes, but sadly not parsley so not super helpful unfortunately Let's try another one. We got some garlic powder make sure not to use too much of this in your cooking We'll go ahead and take a picture McCormick garlic powder. All right, that one it did amazingly well. It even got the McCormick, which is in a more cursive kind of font. So uh, pretty impressed with that one for sure. I think you get the idea here. It does a generally a good job. There's always going to be things which are more difficult depending on, you know, the shape of the object and how shiny it is and also the type of font. Uh, but in general, I think this would be a useful tool for helping you to identify things in your kitchen. In the last video, I had accidentally left my wallet in the fridge and it was weird, $20 just appeared in there. So I'm kind of thinking, if I just leave it in different places, maybe I'll get some more money or something. Uh, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna leave it in the bathroom this time and we'll see what we get. Don't mind me, Luke, just reading the newspaper. Let's have some fun with them. All right, I'm looking forward to this. We're just heading outside here to see how well this thing works outside. As we're heading out the building, I saw there is a Vision Forward store sign on the ceiling over here. We're about 50 feet away or so. I'm gonna see if we can read it from here. So we'll go ahead and hit the read button, see what we get here. Vision Forward store, skipped one line of unreadable text. Perfect, Vision Forward store. Now I know where I can buy my Orcam read. Okay, so I found some signage. We're outside Vision Forward here, and I'm gonna see if the Orcam Read is able to read this signage here. We're only a couple of feet away, so we'll take a picture and see what results we get. Dog waste still ton. Skipped one line of unreadable text. Please clean up after your dog. All right. I heard dog waste and please clean up after your dog and that is a great piece of advice. And there is some signage across the road. It's not big, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to read it or not, but we sure are gonna try. Now it is a little noisy out here, so excuse the car noise, but let's see how we do here. We're gonna point the camera. And sadly, we just got a ding. That means that sign is a bit too far away and we are not able to read it. So if we wanna read that one, we're gonna to have to cross the road. Okay, here we are on the other side of the street. That same street sign, we're gonna see if we can read it this time. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a picture. Let's hear what we get. No parking, private property. Skip two lines of unreadable text. With 346.66, always towing 414-933-7666. Valley, four departments, one and two bedroom. Think you'll agree it did a much better job that time. One of the things we might want to do with our Orcam Read is read a street sign. And here we are with a street sign. So let's see whether the Orcam Read can tell us where we are. We'll take a picture. Valley forged me. Some blocks of text are unreadable. Sounded a bit strange, but I think I'm at Valley Forge Drive. 
Okay, everybody, well, what do we think about the Orcam Read? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I happen to think it's pretty darn good. And I do like all of Orcam's products. They tend to do a really good job in the design and the functionality. This one is super easy to use. It's got those nice physical controls, and uh, it does a great job with the OCR, as you would expect from Orcam. So who do I think this device is best for? It's probably going to be for those people with low vision um, and those people with other print disabilities. I think the Orcam My Eye, the one that goes on the glasses uh, is probably a little better for people who are blind and of course we do have a video on that so feel free to check that one out as well um, I would definitely recommend trying this device if you're on the market for an OCR device I don't think you will be disappointed and uh, try it out and if you like it then why not go ahead and buy one you are not gonna believe this it's happened again I can feel the weight of my wallet there's something else in here <laughs> I can't wait to see what I got this time let's take a look oh man toilet paper Oh well, you can't win them all. <laughs> well, that's what I thought about the Orcam Read, but what do you guys think? I think this is one of the best OCR companies on the market. You know what? I think it is the best. So uh, put in the comments why you think I'm wrong or right about that. And of course, feel free to get in touch with us. We would love to hear from you. So you can call us at 414-615-0103. You can visit our website, vision-forward.org. And you can send us an email in focus at vision-forward.org. Thanks a lot for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.